Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Friday, September 4th, 2015, around 5.37 in the morning, Bellwork, Massachusetts. It's going to be a nice sunny day and cool, about 72. Some news to report. New York football giants beat the New England Patriots by a score of 12-9 to in the last preseason game. Tom Brady did not play, and it was just field goals. And uh, Aberdeen Ironbirds beat the uh, Lowell Spinners by the score of 2-1. to one. It's Happy National Newspaper Carrier Day in the United States. WWE Champion Seth Rollins was voted the number one wrestler in PWI's Top 500. And the WWE has removed um, Jimmy Superfly Snooker from its alumni page and its Hall of Fame page on their website erasing him from history because of the being him being charged with murder and manslaughter to his ex-girlfriend who passed away 32 years ago today. WWE's added again with, with like with this and if any former WWE superstar commits like a major crime their name's taken out off the website and they kind of erased from history. And that's about it on the news. My first video subject of the day is the continuation of the top 10 greatest everything and anything. I've reached the top 10, um, 10 greatest moments in WCW Monday Night, Monday Night Pro history. Nitro debuted 20 years ago to this date. It was a wrestling program that competed with the WWE for 84 straight weeks. WCW Monday Night Raw beat WWE Monday Night Raw. And they had some great memorable moments on Monday Night Raw for the five and a half years it was on the air on TNT. And here are the top 10 greatest moments in WCW Monday Night Raw history. Number 10 on this list, Hulk Hogan returning wearing the red and the yellow which happened on on like August 9th, 1999, the same day that Chris Jericho made his WWE debut on Monday Night Raw. Hogan wore, wore the black and white of colors of the NWA for the, for the past three years because he was a heel, but he was transitioning back to face. And the surprise that the fans got when Hogan returned for the red and yellow was very, very amazing and stuff like that. Hogan's back as a full-time hero when that happened. Number nine on this list of the greatest moments in WCW Monday Night Raw history. The finger point poke of doom which happened January 4th, 1999 in a like WCW World title match between Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan. This was like, you know, in response from like Mankind winning the WWE title on Raw that night, which was a tape show. Tony Savani says, if you're going to change the channels, don't do it. Because we hear a wrestler by the na name of Mankind once wrestled as Cactus Jack's going to win their world title. That's going to be putting butts in their seats. And this, like, finger point of doom, Hogan points to Kevin Nash. He falls down with the finger point of do doom and pins one, two, three to get the WCW world title and re reunites the NWO. Well, that's what's one of the downfalls of the WCW that 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 finger point of doom. Number eight on this list of the top ten greatest moments in WCW Nitro history. Eric Bischoff joining the NWO on November 18th, 1996. Like, Eric Bischoff was the announcer of Nitro for the first, like, 15 months on the air. And at the end of this Nitro, he conducted an interview, wanted Rowdy Rowdy Piper to come down and stuff. And Piper was saying... He, um, Bischoff was a liar and a this and that, and then the NWA, NWO comes down, and then Hogan and Bischoff hug, and this was a very memorable moment because of Eric Bischoff becoming a heel promoter. This this got like the catalyst of Vince McMahon's Mr. McMahon character. Number seven on this list of the top ten greatest moments in WCW Nitro history, on Anderson's retirement speech which happened on August 25th, 1997. Arn Anderson was forced to retire because of a, he had like an arm injury that left his 
one of his arms very numb and kind of useless and stuff like that. He couldn't wrestle again, and he said to the, he, that memorable speech was great, and he offered his spot of the four horsemen to Kurt Henning, and Kurt Henning ex accepted it. Number six on this list of the top ten greatest moments of WCW Monday Nitro history, the debut of the Sting Crow gimmick, which happened on um, October 21st, 1996. For years, Sting was the franchise of WCW. He had spiked blonde hair and stuff, and he wore colorful face paint, but when there was a fake Sting that joined the NWL all in, in, the, in like the late summer of 1996, the real Sting shows up at Fall Brawl War Games 1996, but many WCW wrestlers don't believe him, and then, it, then he says that he's now a free agent the next night on Nitro. And then a few weeks later, Sting has a new gimmick. He's all dressed in black and stuff. And his face paint looks like The Crow from the 1993 movie. And this gimmick, what Sting had, was a long-running um, angle with him and Hollywood Hulk Hogan, which culminates at Starcade 1997. It was amazing to see Sting's, deck, Sting's gimmick. Number five on this list of the greatest moments in WCW Nitro history, the Ultimate Warrior making his debut and to confront Hulk Hogan on uh, on August 17, 1998, it was over 20 minutes. Warriors back in W back in wrestling and WCW, he you know the, the out that was an awesome promo he did with Hulk Hogan and stuff that led to a match at Halloween Havoc. 1998 when Hogan got his win back from doing the job at WrestleMania 6. Number four on this list of the greatest moments in WCW Nitro history, the last mon Monday Nitro on March 26th, 2001. It was an end of an era for professional wrestling because the main competition to Vince McMahon over the years, WCW was bought by WWE for for very fraction only a fraction of the price only five million dollars mainly it was for the tape library and stuff like that and it was so sad to see no no more WCW Nitro and a tradition on the on the Turner networks of wrestling that went close to 30 years and stuff like that and the Steam Flair one more match was awesome and then the ending has Shane McMahon in the ring at Panama City Beach, Florida, and then Vince McMahon in a Sonya cast at Cleveland was very, very memorable, very sad. Number two on this list, I mean number three on this list of the greatest WCW Monday Night Troll moments of all time was Lex Luger surpri surprising th the crowd in the first Monday night was September 4th, 1995, and then at the end, him helping out Hulk Hogan when, to fight off the Dungeon of Doom, and Hogan and Luger standing face-to-face. -face. Lex Luger was part of the WWE the day before, but he was not working without a contract, and in the summer of 1995, Lex Luger and Sting, who were best friends at one time, Luger told Sting that he was unhappy with WWE not working with the contract. He wanted to come to WCW. Um, Sting told that to Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff really did not want Lex Luger in WCW for one reason or another. And Luke and like Bischoff actually offered Luger a contract which was 20% less than what he was making without a contract with WWE. And much to the surprise of Eric Bischoff, he took he took the deal and stuff like that. And they had to keep this very quiet. And Lex Luger was was still under, still working with the WWE. And then on September fourth, nineteen ninety five, the first WCW night Monday Night Twelve, Lex Luger makes a surprise appearance. And Eric Bischoff says, "What is he doing here? Get him out of here!" And stuff like that. But he knew he was going to be there because Eric Bischoff, you know, ran WCW. Eric Bischoff, the announcer, was like kayfabing and stuff like that and stuff. But they had to keep this very quiet. 
the internet was like in its infancy back then for wrestling rumors, but they did not want to explode. If this this thing happened today, it would be all over the internet. Probably would break down Twitter and Facebook or any other social media site. Number two on this list of the greatest WCW Monday Nitro moments of all time, Scott Hall making his debut on the 5 27 1996 edition of Monday Nitro. He comes to Krause's. He was interrupting a match. He says, you want war, you get it. People that like Scott Hall was coming from the WWE in kind of an invasion angle, which led to the formation of the NWO and stuff like that. It was was one of the most memorable moments of Monday Nitro. But the number one most memorable moment of Monday Nitro of all time, in my humble opinion, was Ric Flair returning on uh, like September 14th, 1998 episode of Monday Night 12 and reforming the Four Horsemen with Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko, and Steve Mongo with Michael Michaels and stuff. Ric Flair was in a heated contract dispute with WCW in the spring and summer of 1998. WCW actually filed a lawsuit against Ric Flair saying breach of contract because Ric Flair had some commitments to do. And it was just to a point where Ric Flair might have never returned to WCW, but him and Eric Bischoff worked out a deal for him to return and we negotiated a contract. And the fans cheering Ric Flair like crazy and stuff, and then Eric Bischoff com coming out and saying, you're through, you're through, you're through, it was one of the most memorable moments of WCW Monday Night Trail history. That's about it on that. I'll be back later. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, two more video blogs. One will be about MBTA Bus Route 104 from Sullivan Square to Mount Malden Center. And the third and final video blog of the night will be about the late great former pro wrestling announcer for Stampede Wrestling and former Calgary Flames announcer Ed Whelan. Keep calm, everybody. And I'm a Julie Brennan guy. Molly Rosenblatt of Fox 35 Orlando, Florida rocks and has nice legs. Uh, Amy Swensey of, of Wish 2 rocks. Elizabeth Hart of Local Six Rocks, and in the words of Sean Lucha, get out! See you later, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Bye now.